listening to the Critical Hour on Radio Sputnik. I'm Wilmer Leon. It's reported that uh, Somalia tr- Somali troops train alongside U.S. forces in justified accord military exercise. Somalia remains a battlefield in the so-called war on terrorism. For insight into this, let's turn to my next guest. He holds the John J. and Rebecca Moore's Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. He's one of the most prolific writers of our time. His latest books are entitled, I Dare Say, A Gerald Horn Reader and Acknowledging Radical Histories. He is Dr. Gerald Horn. As always, sir, welcome back. Thank you for inviting me. Before we get to this, I, I just got to get your opinion. Did you happen to see this thing where Donald Trump is now selling Bibles? I sure did, and they come with sneakers as well. <laughs> okay. What what does that say to you? Um, I mean, we know the guy is the consummate marketeer, but as a huckster selling Bibles, uh, I, I don't know what could be next. 30 seconds on that. Your thoughts, Dr. Horn. Well, it's well known that Mr. Trump has a very distant relationship with not only the Bible, but Christianity. He's only spotted in churches during funerals, not even for weddings, for that matter. And so this is the utter example of cynicism. And that is saying a mouthful when it comes to Mr. Trump. Okay. It's reported that Somali troops training alongside U.S. forces, uh, it's the Somalia's elite Donab or Lightning Brigade. They recently took part in this year's annual Justified Accord military exercises for the first time. What signals is this sending to you, Dr. Horn? Well, the signal is that the apparent eviction of the United States from its drone base in Niger, due west of Somalia, has perhaps caused Washington to double down on its intervention in Somalia. Because this eviction from Niger is quite significant, quite profound, because not only was it a multi-million dollar construction job, but as well, the eviction is not only in accord with analogous events in Burkina Faso and Mali and other nations in the Sahel. But just this past Monday in Senegal, the most stable nation in the neighborhood, you had the election of a new president, only 44 years old, Mm -hmm. elected on a platform quite hostile to French neocolonialism. And if history and the neighborhood is any guide, that probably suggests that Senegal, too, will be seeking to improve relations with both Russia and China, and probably Iran, too, since Senegal is predominantly a Muslim nation. And that, too, has caused, undoubtedly, the United States to feel that it has to double down on its relationship with Somalia. But alas, Washington will find problems in seeking a foothold in that nation on the Horn of Africa, as we've said many times on these airwaves, the reigning power in Somalia externally is Turkey, which, of course, is an alleged uh, ally of the United States and NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But given the fact that Turkey has also not danced to Washington's tune altogether in Ukraine, and given the fact that the oil has just been discovered offshore of Somalia, with Turkey having first dibs, uh, I dare say that Washington feels that training, uh, quote unquote, uh, Somali troops will be a sure avenue towards easing Ankara out of the pole position. Uh, Likewise, staying in the neighborhood, uh, Washington is quite concerned with the role of Addis Ababa with Ethiopia the giant of the region, the giant in some senses of the continent, second only in population to Nigeria. And of late, uh, Ethiopia has been flexing its muscles. Uh, That is to say that Ethiopia has broken an agreement with regard to Somaliland, the breakaway region from the larger Somalia. And Washington has objected to that. 
undoubtedly Washington wants leverage over Ethiopia, which, by the way, has supported Russia with regard to the Ukraine caper. And the, given the fact that the Somalis have a justifiable reputation for being fierce fighters, I'm sure that Addis Ababa is paying close attention uh, to the fact that Washington supposedly is now training troops in Somalia. And then Somalia abut the Red Sea. We're all too familiar with Ansar Allah in Yemen across the Red Sea and the militarized sanctions that's imposed upon Israel, turning the major Israeli port, speaking of a lot, uh, once a thriving commercial a citadel for Israeli interest into a kind of a ghost town. And so with its toehold in Somalia, and you can expect further pressure on the Red Sea ports of Yemen as well. So it should only come as a surprise to those who are not paying attention that this story has emerged of U.S. imperialism uh, seeking further to interfere in the domestic and internal affairs of Somalia. You mentioned Nigeria. You mentioned the uh, the drone bases and General Langley leading the uh, leading the group and not being well received. Is this an indication that imperialism? on the continent is on the wane and should the United States, and, and if so, th- th- how concerned, sh- how concerned should the United States be with these, with these developments? Well, I would not say on the wane, but I would certainly say on the back foot, particularly with regard to its relationship with the continent's powers, speaking of South Africa, a due South, uh, it's no secret that relations have taken a downturn between Pretoria uh, and Washington. That downturn was not alleviated when Foreign Minister Pandor uh, spent a few days in Washington, D.C., just a few days ago, uh, receiving a rather less than warm embrace. Uh, it's no secret that Washington is upset with South Africa because of its dragging U.S. ally Israel into the International Court of Justice on a credible charge of genocide of Israel against Gaza, not to mention South Africa being a member of good standing of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Uh, This has led the United States to seek leverage uh, against Pretoria, particularly in the run-up to the May elections, just a month or two away, the 30th anniversary of the first democratic elections in South Africa that brought Nelson Mandela to power. Already, we're receiving disturbing reports of U.S. interference in these elections, not least with a kind of de facto alliance with the neo-apartheid party, speaking of the Democratic alliance. And then there is the curious development of the so-called MK party, led by the disgraced former president of South Africa, speaking of Jacob Zuma, who has been all over the map with regard to campaign promises, but Uh, it's no secret, too, that uh, Mr. Zuma is easily manipulated, uh, given the fact that he has uh, four wives and children too numerous to count. I doubt if he even knows their names, uh, which means that he's eminently susceptible to being bribed. And so you see that Washington has sought to improve relations with Angola in southwest Africa. Of course, uh, Angola probably will not rise to the bait of being manipulated against South Africa. And for evidence of that, you need look no further to the fact that President Lorenzo of Angola just spent quality time in China with President Xi Jinping, the major force in the Angolan economy. Washington was even reduced to shrinking sanctions against Zimbabwe, the neighbor to the north of South Africa. Obviously, to gain leverage against South Africa was the reason for shrinking those sanctions. But uh, I doubt if that will be a payoff or a dividend for the tattered foreign policy of U.S. imperialism as well. So I understand why there are those who see U.S. imperialism being on the wane in Africa. Uh, But, of course, uh, we should not uh, count out U.S. imperialism. Uh, We should not 
uh, count our chickens before the eggs are hatched. The New Arab reports Algeria pushes for Palestine full membership at UN after the ceasefire resolution. And that to me is just another data point, uh, another indication that a number of these African countries are starting to flex. Dr. Horn. Well, certainly, and it's no surprise that it's Algeria in this very unique position. We all recall quite fondly that from 1969 to 1972, it was Algeria that broke historic ground when it allowed the Black Panther Party to open a diplomatic legation in Algiers. We all recall quite fondly the fact that it was Algeria that opened it to the Martinican exile, speaking of France Fanon the well-known writer, medic, intellectual, uh, who spent some of his best years uh, fighting alongside the militants in Algeria as they surged independence from French and neocolonialism in 1962. We also know that today uh, Algeria is being courted by the North Atlantic powers because it's replete with natural gas, and given the fact that there has been an attempt to boycott Russian natural gas on the part of the Western European nations, uh, that puts uh, Algeria and its bounty of natural gas in a very advantageous position. Uh, But we also know that uh, Washington is up to its old tricks, seeking to manipulate uh, Algeria's neighbor, speaking of Morocco, against Algeria. Of course, there's a conflict between these two North African giants over the former Spanish colony of Western Sahara, which... Morocco has tended to try to annex. Algeria has opposed that stoutly. And likewise, we see that Algeria was uh, quite uh, opposed to any sort of external intervention by France after the regime change in Niger uh, to the south of Algeria in July 2023. Uh, That did not win many plaudits uh, in Washington. Likewise, it did did not win plaudits in Algiers when they witness on a daily basis the spectacle of their national and those of Algerian descent uh, being harassed as almost like a rite of passage by the police in France. And so we also know that with regard to this resolution just passed in the United Nations Security Council, uh, with regard to a ceasefire in Gaza, that it was pushed heavily and steadily by Algeria, Uh, They are very upset by the fact that Washington has claimed that this resolution is non-binding and that will deepen the already widening rift in the Arab world with Algeria on the left in the vanguard, accompanied by Yemen and Syria and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, opposed by the sellout regime for the most part, including uh, the United Arab Emirates in the first place and to a certain degree Saudi Arabia as well. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, thank you so much for your time. Greatly, greatly appreciate that analysis. I look forward to having you back. 